I want to talk about alignment and the functioning of the 1324 knee. 1324 is a five bar constant friction knee, generally designed for a K2 uh, type application where you want a lot of stability. When I say you want a lot of stability, what happens is when they weight load, it then flexes the stance flexion and puts all the alignment into a much more stable position. Hopefully you can see the knee bending here. So at heel strike, they're going to hit load pressure. They're going to get a little bit of motion that actually aligns the mechanism to make it more stable. And it'll stay stable until they come to mid stance and now it's changing its direction and then it easily bends for swing. Now, not everybody works straight out of the box. Not everything is set up perfectly for each individual patient. You'll have a patient who needs more security. You have a patient that needs less security. In general, if you imagine a line going from this pivot point through that pivot point going up, and you measure, have another line that goes from this pivot point and that one coming up, they intersect back here. So your knee center, in essence, is way back here. So if I can tilt this knee backwards, I'm putting the knee center even more stable. Okay, so it's about stability. How do I align it? If I want it super stable for a patient, you align the knee accordingly to what you're trying to achieve. If you tilt it forward, if you tilt the knee forward, you're bringing the knee center closer to the socket that means the patient needs to be more in control. The patient needs the strength. You align it accordingly. Now, <clears throat> there is another alignment that is important, and that is the strength required to compress this spring right here, the centrode, which gets it into that stable position. How much spring do we need? There are two screws right here and those adjust the centros. What is vital is that you turn them exactly the same. If you turn one more than the other, you're going to get premature wear. And you won't get the action you're looking for. So if you go an eighth of a turn, go an eighth of a turn on the other side. Keep track, stay focused, and adjust these equally. The other adjustment on this knee is the ability for the friction. How do I adjust my friction? And the friction is adjusted um, on top, right in this little slot right there. And you just tighten that up, and that will make more or less resistance. When you get this knee, you're going to notice that it has a very smooth action. It's very nice. But it also has a terminal impact, because this is not a hydraulic nor pneumatic. And patients who are insecure in their walking like to know when they're in the safe mode before they apply weight. So we want to get a little bit of terminal impact just so they know where they're at. Because this is being fit to a patient that's not a K3 yet. They're not an active walker. Now, this has the ability up on top, this pyramid will rotate so you can rotate the knee. There's a small screw, I'm not sure you can see it. Actually, let me do this. There's a small screw right on top. Now when you get your rotation correct, two things you want to do, tighten that screw, but before you do that, make sure that you have put in some sort of a thread sealer on this screw. Do not just assume that it is okay just to tighten it. Torque it and thread sealer, put on the threads before you finish your alignment. And then lastly, tighten up that little screw and that'll, that'll make sure that no rotation takes place. So, simply stated, we have rotation of the socket. You have a little bit of slide right with this screw, not a tremendous amount. Um, and you have the ability to change the friction, and you have the ability to change the strength of uh, the five bar or whether it's going into that safe mode. But pretty much very simple. You have one more adjustment, and that's extension assist. How hard do you want this to kick out? how much strength you want, and that is adjusted. Oops. Let me get to it real quick. Right here in the bottom.
So this can be tuned to how much extension assist you want to have on the patient. Okay. All of these things <clears throat> is for your benefit for your patient. I'm calling this knee the new standard and safety knees. It has a major advantage over the knees that we call standard knee, uh, safety knees. Those knees are a frictioning device. This is a geometric device. Ge geometry change will never wear out. It doesn't wear out as in use. That's the problem with what we call the safety knee is it's great when we deliver it, but six months later, the braking mechanism's worn out and it's no longer safe. So anyway, this also comes in a variety of different tops. We have one that we call a lotus top for a lower profile type patient, and we have the pyramid top. Now it's saying that this is adequate for the K2. To go into the K3, we have the exact same knee, but with a pneumatic unit attached to it. And the pneumatics will give you the ability to come out of extension assist slowly. So when I let this go, it's just a nice slow reaction. And that is tunable by the prosthetist for extension and flexion. So you can tune the action of the knee. This knee has really proved itself out really well in some third world countries. It's very durable. It's very long lasting. But like any mechanical device, it needs to be taken care of. Just because I say it's durable doesn't mean that it shouldn't be kept clean and it should never be used in salt water. Okay? If it happens to get in a harsh environment, be sure they clean it with regular water um, and that, that's wiped down. Any kind of harsh environment that might go inside of the knee, down inside the pneumatics, is only going to wear it out sooner. But even if you wore out the pneumatics in this, it's still stable because of the geometry. It has geometric stability. Okay? But the same adjustments with the extension uh, as the 1324, this is 1323, but it's the same adjustments as the 1324 with, with the exception of the pneumatics.